Low cost spay neuter clinic is one that is usually it's a nonprofit. Um, it's funded, it's a subsidy funded by grants and sponsorships and donors uh, in order to keep the cost really low for people who can't afford regular services, but it's for health reasons and it's basics. So it's usually spay, neuter, vaccines, microchips. I mean, hundreds of dollars. So you go to any regular vet and, and we've called multiple vets and the vet cost is like anywhere from $150 and up per animal, depending on the sex, depending on the species. Um, even uh, rats to get them fixed is $150 straight up coming in. So the cost for an affordable care clinic is based on the grants and subsidies at the time, but it's it can be you know maximum up to $100, $150 maximum, and that's like for your most expensive animal typically. So it's it's a big big cost difference. Um, like right now we have the Florida Animal Friend grant, and it makes our Cats, our owned cats are $40 to include getting fixed and rabies vaccinated. Outdoor community cats are $25 for the same thing. So an affordable care clinic is, is necessary for every county, I believe, because we are paying a county shelter to uh, take in animals and care for them, but we're not stopping the production of unwanted offspring. So providing these basic affordable care options to community members who love their animals, who just can't necessarily afford hundreds of dollars to go get them fixed and vaccinated, is actually a way of um, saving the county money for the intake at the shelter. It's saving the county money and time based on staffing to take care of them. And it's also helping the um, community with health issues. So it's keeping them vaccinated. It's keeping the populations down. Um, there's less animals out there to end up with scratches or bites. And there's less animals to get rabies from raccoons and such. So it's, it's basically all around good for every community. And I think every county should have an affordable care clinic for sure. You know, I get this question a lot about community cats because people think that because we fix and vaccinate them, that means that we love ferals. The thing is, is nobody loves ferals, okay? That's not a thing. Um, feral is describing a wild animal, an animal that doesn't have an owner who's been living out, probably born out in the wild. Um, you know, it's fin for itself. It's, it's not a pet. And so community cats are a collection of feral, wild, and stray cats that have been abandoned. These cats can end up in animal shelters and they typically, I mean, they most of them don't have owners. They've either been abandoned by their owners or they never had an owner in the first place uh, because cats have only been domesticated, I don't know, a couple thousand years now. It hasn't been nearly as long as dogs. And so their instinct to revert back to living on their own, providing for themselves is much quicker than it is for dogs. Um, so in order to keep the community population down and keep the health good and positive health aspects, um, we get them fixed and vaccinated and ear tipped. And that ear tip is a universal sign that they have been fixed and vaccinated. And somebody in the community is caring for them. Somebody is feeding them. Somebody loves them. Um, they are, that's how they become community cats. They don't have an owner. They have multiple people who care for them. They have caretakers, not owners. They can be predators like any other animal. I mean, this is circle of life in any, in any um, animal kingdom, it's a circle of life. So the caretakers are feeding a certain number of cats. If you remove cats from an area and you kill them, more cats are going to move in because there's still a food source there. If more cats keep moving in and say the caretaker dies, moves away, whatever it is, and these animals are not fixed and vaccinated, then they can procreate even more. 
And then if there's no food source, they go looking for other food sources. So instead of having a controlled environment um, where we're trying to actually limit colonies, we don't want colonies to form. What we're trying to do is increase the health of the colony that's already there and limit the number of offspring that are produced by that colony. Um, for every new animal that shows up, you either have to provide more food, more space, um, more vet services, or you can just fix what's there and you know they live out their years and um, th that limits the the offspring I mean we're, we're not creating a new issue we're trying to limit an issue that um, formed just from people being unaware of what was going on uh, so I, I think a big thing to remember is that kitty litter was invented in 1947 that signifies the time when people started realizing cats can be indoor animals. So that wasn't that long ago. And so for us to state that all these caretakers are actually creating a problem by, by feeding these outdoor cats, no, these cats have been outdoors. People have had outdoor cats. They, they wanted rodent control. They wanted um, indoor outdoor animals. They, they just really didn't think of cats as like completely indoor animals. People still think that a cat has to have outdoor access and it has to be out in the sun. And I can tell you from experience, my cat could care less about ever stepping foot outside the door whatsoever, ever a day in her life. Like she sees a window, she's cool with it, like it's there, she might look at it, but you open that door and she's like, nope, going to bed, you know? So um, it's just, it's a big thing to remember. I always remind people, you know, the, the difference that is in dogs and cats, the difference in the years of domestication and our mindsets are just, I love all animals. I do. Um, am I scared of a lot of them? Probably. But I do love all animals. Uh, and, you know, I, I would get very upset if I had an outdoor cat that was killing birds or chipmunks or, you know, whatever it was. It makes me very upset. Um, but to say that that's new or to say that because I feed an outdoor cat that it's my fault that I did that, no, because if you take my outdoor cat and you remove her, another outdoor cat's gonna come and it's not gonna be fixed and vaccinated already like mine is. So it happens all the time. You know, um, there's a lot of birds of prey around here that swoop in and pick up kittens and dogs even, small dogs out of people's yards. It happens all the time. Um, it, it just happens. So we're trying to limit a problem that has been there for years. We're not creating new issues. We're definitely not dumping new cats and, and none of us walk outside and go, gosh, I hope that I have a colony of ferals wherever I move to next, you know? <laughs> so it's just not a thing. <laughs>Uh, the closest one, so Operation Spay Bay is in Panama City. That's where we currently drive to. It's two and a half hours one way, uh, about 110 miles. Uh, Dothan, Alabama has um, wire grass spaniard clinic and it's about the same distance in Alabama. And then there's uh, Spring Hill if you go the opposite way, which I don't even think they're taking very many right now. And uh, SNP clinic in Mississippi. Those are the closest ones that are open and um, a low cost or affordable care clinic, spay neuter clinic, so. In 2017 was our highest euthanasia rate at our, our local shelter here in Santa Rosa County. And 2017 was, at the end of 2017 was the first time we made our first trip with nine animals on it to Operation Spay Bay in Panama City. 2018, our shelter, um, started working to, they lifted the breed ban on dogs. They, um, we got TNR countywide in 2019. These changes, along with the fact that we've taken over 6,000 animals to get fixed and vaccinated in Panama City, our shelter for the first time in 2021 became no kill, meaning that they saved more than 90% of the lives there. When in June of 2018, one month, they killed over 80% of the animals in that shelter. So 
the impact of not having a clinic close enough is not having access to it, even the transport services not even being, being available at the time is huge because either you're gonna have massive intake numbers at the local shelters, which they're gonna have to care for, feeding, staffing, you know, lots of money is put into it, or you're gonna have people who completely seal themselves off because they're too scared to ask for help. And those are the ones who become the hoarders and they either die in the home with lots of animals that get removed later on and end up at the shelters anyways, or they have health problems. You know, we've seen, seen a lot of senior citizens who have flea bites all the way up their legs or, um, you know, rashes on them and the smell, you know, the ammonia is just slowly killing them. Uh, these are people who have tried to ask for help and tried to get help and they just couldn't afford it. And um, they all love animals so much that, you know, they just didn't have access to these type of things. Um, and the wait list to get in to get your animal fixed. You know, we take 50 to 60 animals every other week. The clinics around here maybe fix, you know, 10, 15 per week. So it, it's huge. It's, um, you can definitely see a trending line when you look at the graphs of how many we've gotten fixed versus how many have been dying at the local shelters. So it's, it's big and I, I'm surprised that every county isn't mandated to have a spay neuter clinic for sure. Um, we, for the past five years now, have been taking 50 to 60 animals every other week um, to Panama City, to Operation Spay Bay, two and a half hours one way. Uh, we used to do them where we loaded everybody up in the morning, but we found that it was inaccessible for a lot of people to get up that early in the morning and get their animals ready and such, plus, you know, limiting their food overnight for surgery. It was just a big hassle. So we started providing um, an overnight service. So we have drop off here at the paw pad um, every other Monday night from 6 to 7 p.m. And there's a drive through service. People drive up, they get, have their paperwork and volunteers go out and they help unload the animals. We inspect them for health, uh, making sure that there's no respiratory issues, nothing contagious going on and we board them overnight. And we also have a pickup service in Tiger Point as well. So we don't have to, um, they don't have to pay. It's like $14, you know, if they go back and forth both days. So we send the van down there um, and then we board them here overnight. And the very next morning at 4 a.m., we start loading them up into the vehicle and secure them. We make sure all the kennels are cleaned out, secured down, zip ties, bungee cords, the works, um, walking the dogs, checking the cats. And then they drive, the driver will drive two and a half hours over and they're over there by 7 a.m., uh, 7.30 a.m. And the crew over there will unload them all, get them fixed. They get them fixed pretty fast. They do over a hundred animals a day at that clinic. And then they drive back here and they're here by 5 p.m. and the owners are back between 6 and 7 p.m. to pick up all of their animals in the same drive-through line. So everything works in reverse the very next night. So we unload them, we inspect them, make sure everything's good to go, get all their paperwork together um, and medicines, if they have extra medicines and such, and then we give them back to their owners. Uh, we take uh, anywhere from 50 to 60 animals, depending on um, whatever we've got going on. So it's, it's typically around 50 animals and those spots fill within 15 minutes. So every other Tuesday, uh, transport slots open online on our website at noon and they <laughs> fill up they fill up uh, within 15 minutes. Um, last week it filled up within eight minutes and we get calls left and right about people thinking that our website's down, something's not working, you know, what's going on. They fill up and these are prepaid slots. So these aren't, these aren't like just people saying that they wanna come, these aren't our friends, these aren't our foster animals, nothing. This is people online paying, getting it done right away. So absolutely the, the 
solution to this driving, the volunteers that it takes, the time that it takes, um, the people getting upset that they don't have the access, um, or, or the people who can't use the computer. Don't, they don't know how to use it, they're upset. And these are the people we really wanna reach, but we're just not able to right now because that's the way that we keep organized. It's a lot of people, it's a lot of paperwork. I mean, we are constantly working behind the scenes, answering emails, phone calls, um, lots of things going on. Plus, you know, the intake of the animals that were born unwanted um, because the services weren't available. So um, we purchased uh, 25 acres on Pine Blossom in Moulton, and our first goal on that property is to build an affordable spay-neuter clinic that will be high volume, that will spay-neuter, vaccinate, microchip, uh, minimal testing, you know, heartworm, leukemia testing, and you know, make something really accessible to this area. You know, there's not any affordable care clinic within five counties over. And the need is so great. There is multiple transports. I know of four transports right off the top of my head that drive from different places, from different organizations, just to drive over to these clinics. We're throwing money into other counties just so we can get our animals fixed here. And the other counties, we, we get some hate mail sometimes from these other counties who are very upset that we're taking up their slots in their counties to get our animals fixed over here. Um, it's, it's sad, it's terrible because they're right. We should have a clinic here and we will. We, I mean, since day one, that's exactly why this organization was started was to get a clinic open. Honestly, for this clinic right now, the, the funding is the biggest part that we need. Um, we are breaking ground by the end of this year, by the end of 2022, and we are going to need money to start the building process. We've got the contractors, we've got the surveys done, our development order has been submitted. Uh, we are ready to go, uh, but we need the funding to get it really, really off the ground, off the dirt level. Um, and get this clinic operational. This will be paid staff. This is not a volunteer clinic. This is paid staff. These are paid veterinarians, actual veterinarians that will be working there. And it, it, it's a huge service to our county. So th I guess the funding is the biggest need right now, but we also need um, uh, worker, like uh, contractors and such. So landscaping, development, things like that.